nobody wants to buy a house and then have to cut back on what they do with their personal life or other expenses or how they enjoy living. You know, like nobody wants to be house poor. <laughs> Happy March 1st. Uh, welcome back to another week or two of real estate. It's a new month. I am actually at the Next Gen temporary office. This little office space is called She Space in Houston. It's right off I-10. Um, they just have this space until our official office is done being built out. But I um, woke up in the city of Houston this morning. Y'all know I live in the suburbs. I say that all the time. And we have a sales meeting for the brokerage at noon today. It is currently 1039. So I was like, well, I'm not going to drive back home just to come back out this way because everything that we do is normally within the city limits of Houston. So I just came to the office, have some emails to get sent out. I'm, my CPA is going to kill me because I was supposed to have uploaded all my tax documents by the 25th of last week and of <clears throat> by the 25th of February and I did not do that and then also I just had some other homework that needed to be done between my CPA and my financial advisor um that I just didn't do <laughs> in a timely manner so I'm gonna take these two hours this morning to get that done one I'm needing to set up a payroll system if any of y'all know anything about payroll I'm looking either between Gusto or ADP. I'm thinking I'm going to go with Gusto um, because I'm changing my LLC to an S Corp. Tax reasons, if any of y'all know anything about that, save on some taxes. Um, so I need to be able to pay myself as an employee um, since I am my only employee as of right now. So I need to make that call. Um, and then, yeah, then we'll go to the sales meeting today and we'll probably do some neighborhood hunting. And then I need to touch base with um, a client that I'll be showing properties to tomorrow. Just get our schedule squared away. <sighs> yep, that's it. That's all. Happy March 2nd, you all. I am already out and about for the day. It's 1144 and I am showing... Um, the clients that I was with last weekend. Oh, oh, let me turn around. Um, the clients that I am being a showing agent for. I'm back out with them trying to find us a property, y'all. It is it is tough. So right now we're out in Magnolia where the price points are lower, but the tax rates are higher. So I found a KB property. KB Homes property, a nice three bedroom, one story house that has a den, which is really cute. Hold on, y'all. Anywho, y'all, um, the house was three bedrooms in a den, which he's really looking for four bedrooms and like a game area. But you know, we got to work with what we what we got. But since the tax rates out here are higher, as oh shoot, am I going the wrong way? No. Since the tax rates out here are higher, it's just still pushing the mortgages up. So the house would have been like $285. Um, but the mortgage was coming out. The tax rate was $3.4. HOA $600 was coming out to like $2,400 still. So, okay, y'all. It's lunchtime. I've been to about three, four, five different communities searching for a house. So me and, um, client are gonna go to Mama Juanita's Mexican restaurant and have some powwows over some margaritas. Margaritas. Made our way all the way out to Granger Pines, Conroe, Texas. I think we have found a property for our buyer. Put the dots. Oh, find out. Put the dots. Here, the bill of dots. <laughs> and then when the pre calls done, <laughs> Okay. Okay. Oh, I didn't okay. know that. That's good to and know. So this is like the you better get your. Uh -huh. okay, well <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Excuse me, y'all. <laughs> it's five forty-five. I am done house shopping. We found a house. And 
deep into Conroe, but nonetheless, we found one. Now I'm gonna make this 45 minute drive back home and uh, relax. <laughs> hey y'all, another day of real estate. I'm here at Stewart Title dropping off earnest money for Jessica. And I may go look at a property for Taryn today as well. So let's go. Hello, good people. <laughs> I, today is, today is um, March 7th, Monday morning, and I just wanted to tell y'all about a phone call that I just had that just veered off to the left. I ain't gonna say it went all the way left because I be having to reel myself back in, <laughs> but it veered. And it wasn't even my fault that it veered. I always say nothing's ever my fault. I really do take ownership. But, so as you all know, y'all saw probably in like the last clip or so, I took Yasmin and Jeremy out to look at two um, lease properties. We submitted a lease, um, we submitted an application on one of them. This morning, came back, they accepted the application. So the properties, it's, I know I didn't really vlog that much of it, so y'all probably didn't see, but, um, the second property we went to, there was a ton of mosquitoes at the front door. And when I say a ton, like this is Houston, Texas. So, you know, you're, you're used to mosquitoes, right? But this this um, house was right next to like a detention pond. And of course the home has been vacant for a, a little while. So now there's just like literally a nest, ugh, whatever mosquitoes are called, of just mosquitoes buzzing around the front door. And it's not, it's not a little amount of mosquitoes. It's a lot of mosquitoes, probably like 30 of them just buzzing at the door. So <clears throat> my clients asked me if um, I could find out if they would treat, you know, the area before they moved in, which is absolutely a fair ask. Regardless of if you're renting or buying or whatever, you want to move into a place that is nice in all aspects of nice, clean, you know, bug free, all of that. <sighs> so I called this morning and um, it's a property management company. So you all know some some lease homes are either just leased out by like a, 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 a agent like myself who will just list the house, lease it. I don't do property management. I don't do any of that, right? So I just do that portion of it. Or you have property management companies but even to be a property manager, you still actually have to be a licensed realtor. So call the property management company. I asked the, I guess she's the assistant or whoever that answered the phone. She's like, okay, give me a second to find out. I was on hold for probably like five minutes. She comes back and she's like, I'm so sorry for the long hold time. I was asking the listing agent and he decided to answer a phone call while I was talking to him. So I haven't got your answer. Those are her exact words. So even when she said that, I said, oh, well, that's, you know, I'm thinking to myself, that's a little rude of him, but whatever. So now on hope for probably like another five minutes, he finally answers the phone. And I didn't know it was going to be him getting on the phone. I thought it was going to be her just coming back with the answer. So he answers and he was like, yeah, you know, and his, he's, I don't, I don't even know, you know, what, what, what he is or where he's from, but he has some accent. His last name is Wesnacek or Wallach, something, something different with accent. So I'm just like, you know, and it's thick too. And I'm like, all right, you know, talking to the man. <clears throat> so he just starts talking and I'm just like, who, first of all, who am I talking to? And he's like, oh, you know, I'm this, I'm, I'm the listing agent. I said, oh, okay, cool. I said, I'm just wanting to find out my clients have been approved for the property. Um, when we went to look at it, there was an excess of mosquitoes. You know, they're wanting to know, can you treat the property? He goes, nope, we don't do that. And I said, and I probably, you know, I, I know me, like I said, like I said, I know myself very well. So I said, oh, hmm, okay. Well, I'll let my clients know and I'll see how they want to move forward. Or I might have said, or I'll see if they want to move forward. Um, so I might have said, you know, hmm, I might have said if they want to move forward or whatever. And I guess, you know, my tone wasn't of anything. It was just more like, I know my hmm, okay, probably like threw him off. Because honestly, I wasn't expecting him to just flat out say no. You know, like 
especially as a property management company, I would have thought that he would have maybe asked a few more questions or said, you know, let us see what we can do or just, I'm not saying that you have to say yes, clearly, but yo flat out no gave me the middle of April will be good, but we don't want to lose the house. Um, reading text message y'all. <clears throat> um, hold on y'all, hold on. So, okay. So anyways, right. So I just wasn't expecting him to say no that way. So it kind of threw me. So I did think it was, I did think it was rude. So my response of the, oh, hmm, probably rubbed him wrong back. Who knows? But instead of just ending the phone call and letting me go, you know, relate what he said to my clients, he, he goes on this tangent. I think that man was talking for like 45 seconds to a minute of just, and really I don't even, I don't recall exactly what he was saying because I think I was just so confused at what he was upset about, you know, because he's just going on and on and on. You know, well, that's just not something that we do. And this is just such an extreme ask. And I've never had an agent ask me for something like this before. And, you know, we lease a thousand homes a year. And, da -da 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 -da. and you know, just bumping his gums, y'all. Bum, 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 bum. And I'm like, after, you know, after a while, it's almost, it's almost so much that I can sit there and just listen to you. Go. I said, all right, sir. It's like, cool. I said, I'm not, I'm not understanding why you were so flustered with this. I said, all I did was ask you, you know, could you do something? And you said no. And he said, well, you came at me hard. And I said, me? <laughs> I came at you hard? I said, I don't think I came at you hard. I said, I'm, you know, I apologize if you took it that way. He was like, yeah, but you know, you just, you came at me hard. That's all he kept saying. And I was just like, he was like, well, you, you know, you, you said, you know, like you're going to go back to your clients. He was like, you know, like you said it like, you know, you're, you're going to go back to your clients and see if they want to move in. I mean, if they're trying to weasel their way out of the lease. And I said, hold on, nobody's trying to weasel their way out of a lease because one, the lease isn't signed yet. So we don't have a lease. We have an application that has been approved and my clients have the right to ask you what can be done about this insect problem that you have at this property anyway so he's going on and on and on and um for another, another tangent of foolishness that he's talking and i'm just he said something once again reiterated the fact that i came at him hard and you know you know my my approach or whatever you know wasn't the best and i'm just like your approach wasn't the best. So I asked him, I said, so tell me this. Are you telling my clients no to the treatment of this insect problem because you don't like the way that I quote unquote spoke to you? Or are you saying no because it's really something that you all cannot do? Because we know that we're in real estate and everything is negotiable and can be done even with a, just a lease. So stop playing with me. You know, like you can't tell me no based off of our interaction. You still need to do everything ethically sir Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> and he was like no that's 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 not why i'm saying that but i mean you know your response just didn't really warrant a, a kind response for me i said response didn't warrant anything from you all you had to do was end the conversation that's all you had to do but you still want to sit here and go on and on and on and on and, on. and now you got me going on and on and on because you know riled me up after i had a good workout this morning went and grocery shopped i'm prepping my day to be a positive day and you do this and then he goes this is where he really takes me off then he goes and says well the security deposit on this property is only you know three hundred dollars your ten your you know your clients are good their credit's good da, 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 this he's like you know they can just spend that that extra money that they're saving on the security deposit and treat the home themselves and i said now this is where you're wrong i said you have no right or no reason to be in my clients pockets and to tell them what they can and cannot spend their money and what they need to do like now you just you'll be you doing the most I got to stop talking y'all. I got business to do. But anyways, <clears throat> that happened. So I just told him, I said, this is where we're going to end this conversation. I'm going to relay this information to my client like I'm obligated to. And I will relay back to you what they have to say. Other than that, have a wonderful day. Click. I'm just like, how are you going to start my Monday morning off with that type of energy? Like... 
some people are just, they just feel like they are just so high and mighty that they can't, they just, they do not like responses that semi even challenge them. People need to be challenged in this world, especially this world of real estate. I don't know what you wanted from me, sir, but I damn sure wasn't about to be begging you. Like, if your answer is no, then okay. But now you might be taking the chance of losing out on a tenant for your client because you don't want to treat the property for mosquitoes. And gosh, I wish I would have recorded it, but it is excessive. Going to tell me we're in Houston, Texas. I know we're in Houston, Texas. I don't live here my whole life. I was born here. I know what normal mosquitoes are compared to that nest of buzzing ass mosquitoes by that front door. <sighs> Anyways, my clients want to move on with the house, you know, so that's their decision. Here he goes. Here, no, look, now they done responded because they asked if, um, and he's just so rude. He's so freaking rude. I said, hi, Abby, who is the other person. They are asking if the lease can start April 15th. His response, okay. Oh, he's the president of the company. Yeah, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Okay, so this weekend while I was out living my best life, I went to Dallas and celebrated a friend's birthday this past weekend. Um, but I got two new clients this weekend that were referred to me. Um, so one I just actually touched base with, she's already pre-approved. She's been referred to me by one of my preferred lenders, um, her and her significant other. Their lease ends April 30th and they are looking to find a property. So I'm actually going to head out with them at 2.30. We're going to go to new construction and then we're going to go look at some resale. There's a townhome that they've had their eye on that is honestly a little overpriced. Um, but we're going to see. And then we're just going to look at some other resales and just try to make the most of the day. She's actually a flight attendant, you know, flight attendants have a, a spot in my heart. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do that so i'm just going through the mls right now to see what's on the market what they may or may not be interested in looking at just going to send them over a few options as far as resales because just in case new construction doesn't pan out then we're, we're gonna have to hit this resale <laughs> um but that's that anyways so let me send these over um oh the reason why i'm taking them to resale first is because um they they're not super cash heavy so they are wanting the seller to contribute to closing costs and i know right now dr horton has their two-step um promotion going on um and they are paying all closing costs for this for the buyers and a full appliance package as well and a nice hefty commission for the realtor so of course that's always a benefit but you know if we can get them all closing costs paid and they are going to give all appliances, refrigerator, washer, dryer, sprinkler system, and blinds in the home, that's always nice. Um, but, you know, we're just going to find whatever home makes them happy. But we have to move swiftly because they're on a, um, we got like two months. Really, we have like six weeks. So... Let's see what we All right, y'all. Got it out of the house. Came on over to DR Horton. I'm going to meet um, my new clients here. See what they have. Their price point is a little above where they want to be, but they don't mind spending it. It's more so can they get approved for it. So they have four homes that are available for their move-in day. So, oh, I think this is them. Okay, so DR Horton was pretty much a hit. So what's happening is is that they were referred to me by a lender, right? But when you go to new construction communities um, to get all the wonderful incentives that they're offering, you have to use their in-house lender or their preferred lender. DR Horton being America's builder, literally the biggest builder in the U.S., um, probably in the world, honestly. Um, of course, they have their own 
mortgage company. They have their own title company. They have all their own stuff. Um, so they're honestly feeling a little torn um, at the thought that they wouldn't be able to use the lender that they've created this good relationship with, which I wholeheartedly understand. Um, and I discussed this with her earlier. She already knows what it is. Um, so I told her, you know, I said, I'm going to do... I'm going to do my due diligence to the client. Like, yes, I appreciate you sending me a referral because clearly I wouldn't have the client if you didn't send them my way. Um, but I have to show them all their options. You know, they expressed to me that they would like somewhere that's going to, you know, give them some select contributions, pay some closing costs. DR Horton is paying all closing costs, all. So the only thing that they would have to pay is their down payment. Um, so we shall see. So we looked at DR Horton, they saw one house, it's actually the same exact house Antonio bought, just a different community. And um, now we are headed to now we are headed to um, look at resale, um, just so we can get a vibe and we can see. So I have an update for y'all after the resale. Okay, okay. Hey friends, how are y'all doing this lovely Tuesday? It is Tuesday, March 8th, the day after yesterday. Um, so as y'all know, I took out two new clients and so the backstory on them is, is that a lot of people will find a lender first before they find a realtor. Um, it's really vice versa, you know, I guess just whoever you reach out to, but a lot of people, when they're looking to use down payment assistance programs, they'll, you know, search the down payment assistance program, then the down payment assistance program will refer you to a lender, et cetera, et cetera. So that is what happened with, um, the client from yesterday. Um, actually, no, 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 but that, that is true, but that's not what happened with them. They actually were sent to a lender. Um, via a different community that they had had interest in um, at the end of last year. They applied with that particular lender and they kind of just got lost in the mix. They never really heard anything back from them. So she then said that she went onto that lender's website and then she found Felicia, my preferred lender, and she connected with Felicia and Felicia referred them to me. So what I did not know as of yesterday was that Felicia um, hadn't... Um, she didn't do their their original pre-approval um she was going on based on what the previous lender did um but that was ran like months ago so anyways last night we were discussing just like their finances and where things need to be um and i was talking to felicia about some things on some numbers and we came to the realization that she needed to rerun their credit because um, it was at the point of expiring pre-approvals do expire um, the credit reports um, You know, they have to update those so it was Some lenders do 90 days some do 120 days um, So Felicia is working on their file now where you know, right as of right now. It was just um, The boyfriend that was going to be on the loan and we're gonna work Felicia's gonna work and see if we can get um both of them on the loan so we can of course get a higher purchase amount etc cetera, etc cetera. um but we had went to the dr horton house yesterday that was the first one and they liked it um they weren't really a hundred percent sold on it because there's another town home a resale town home that they love um and this is and that is actually why we were working on redoing their pre-approval because they need a little bit more money to be able to afford that home. Um, but I told them, you know, we didn't want to miss out on the DR Horton home just in case that other option didn't work because DR Horton home is a brand new home and they're getting everything that they really need for that home, you know, closing costs, all that I told y'all yesterday. So they were working on doing the application and submitting all documents for the DR Horton home last night slash today. And the guy from DR Horton just called me and told me that when he got home last night, the president of their division or whoever, whoever the top dog is, told them that they could not sell any more homes in that neighborhood. <sighs> what? 
which I'm just like, say what? <laughs> Can't currently sell any more homes in that community because they're just basically, they're behind. You know, they're selling all these houses. I think we talked about this in the vlog a little bit ago, maybe, maybe not. They're selling all these houses and construction cannot keep up with how fast that they're pushing these houses out. So, um, we'll see. Hopefully, you know, the home that um, we were trying to get under contract with them, you know, was due to be completed soon. So, hopefully, hopefully they'll let those, those last three or four that they have with completions of April time frame be sold. Um, but he said he's just, so he called me, he said they, they were supposed to get an update today as of to what, how long they're either going to be on hold from selling or, you know, like just what the case is. So he literally just called me and told me that, um, trying to get in touch with Felicia to get an update on where she's at with the, um, renewed pre-approval for them. But other than that, all I can do is kind of just sit on my thumbs and wait which I don't like doing that, but there's, I mean, you know, pre-approvals are out of, out of my control. You know, gotta let the lenders do what the lenders do. Um, other than that, I am going out with Taryn today. Um, been working with Taryn probably, I guess about a month now. Um, we had a few Zoom chats, got her pre-approved. We've been looking through some houses. Our schedules just hadn't been lining up and also, she hadn't been in a rush, um, but I think she's starting to see how swiftly the market is moving, which tends to happen a lot when people actually start looking at houses and saving them and then seeing two days later that those particular houses are gone. So um, it's raining out in Houston right now, and I hate to drive in the rain, uh, and I hate to drive with these gas prices, but <laughs> work must be done. So I'm going to go meet her. We're going to go look at... Um, three properties and uh one of them is a new construction and there's only one left so we'll we'll see how it pans out i'll see what i can show y'all in regards to that um i'm sure i have some other updates for y'all but i just can't think about them right now so i just want to check in um talk to y'all later good wednesday morning it is 8 52 a.m um, I am about to type up an offer for Zeta and Carlin, the um, sweet little couple I met the other day. They fell in love with this townhome way before they even interacted with me. They've seen it a lot of times. We went and looked at it again. Still, honestly, y'all, still really working on their pre-approval, and that's what we were waiting for, just for, for, for um, the lender, Felicia, to, you know, really get everything where it needed to be with their income and, you know, all of that. But we got an email last night. This is one of those open door houses. So Open Door, lovely, lovely Open Door sent their email. This home has received an offer. This home has gotten a lot of interest, which is whatever. We'll be closing it to further offers. Last chance to buy it and get it, get boo, whatever. So, um, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and try to submit an offer. We, I was just talking to them. What property is your client interested in? I was just talking to them about how much they want to offer on the home because one, just based on the comps, the home is it's it's overpriced. Um, they're asking two eighty one. This home is has it. Please submit your offer by twelve p.m. on Thursday, March tenth, for consideration by the seller. This home is not eligible to receive FHA offers until March twenty. What is? Fudge! <laughs> I gotta go, y'all. <laughs> this is why I like talking to y'all when things are happening live because y'all really get to see like my reaction to things and it cracks me up when I watch them back. But unfortunately, that home is only accepting FHA offers until March 29th. They are FHA approved with um, what we're trying to do, they won't be able to get a conventional loan. 
So that house is now on the back burner, unless it just so happens to still be sitting on the market come March 29th. Did I say April? I meant March 29th, if that's what it said. Anyways, they did send me another home yesterday that they liked in Humble. So we're gonna go out there this morning. It's nine o'clock. Told them I'll be there at 1030. Clearly, I got some things to do because I look like this. Um, so we'll see if they like that house and then potentially submit an offer. Um, and we'll go from there. Then after that, I have a meeting with the brokerage. We are setting up a committee to um, celebrate Women's History Month. So I'm going to go be a part of that at the brokerage. And then I have a meeting with who y'all met in the vlog, I think, a vlog or two ago. Lawrence, he's a lender, one of my preferred lenders. Um, I have a meeting with him today to just go over like some marketing things to help me onboard some more sellers. So if you all know anybody in the Houston area, Houston and all of our lovely suburbs, um, let me know. All right, y'all, let me stop jabbing my jaws to y'all. Get about the time. Okay, so I left the house, y'all. I went and showed Zay I went and showed Zeta and Carlin another property. It's been on the house for one day. It's been on the house. It's been on the market <laughs> for one day. And they already have six or seven offers. She said that they're reviewing, calling for highest and best offers by tomorrow. Asking prices right at $250, 249 $9. So they are actually headed, they liked it, so that's good. Um, but I told them, you know, like want to get in you want to rumble and tumble okay with this resale market you got to be ready <laughs> so they are um, going to meet Felicia at her office to really sit down and talk and really figure out this pre-approval thing with them and then there was another community that I just thought about this is why I go out on when I have downtime and stock communities because then I can at least have like a little Rolodex in my head of communities that they can fall within um so i had just remembered one so i'm gonna have them go look at that community and see if there's anything to their liking um but other than that i am currently headed to next gen office to do this meeting for um i think i told y'all about that this morning we're doing the women's month thing to whatever and then I have the other meeting and then whatever. So I might try to meet back up with them a little later today once we get everything figured out, y'all. Yay. Good people. It is 5.33 p.m. Your girl has been out and about all day and I'm about to show a house to Taryn. This property came back on the market today and I was texting the agent yesterday like, yo, if something don't close, let me know before you put that thing back on the market. So it hasn't closed and we're pulling up and God, I pray that she likes it. The numbers are right, everything is right. So let's say a prayer. This is cute. Tile flooring. Downstairs. Down, down. <laughs> <laughs> Patio and backyard. I think she's gonna say yes, y'all. It's really nice. Two bedrooms over here. You have a bathroom, closet. Utility room, wash and dry goes in there, and then the primary. She's really excited. I think we're all surprised at just what we walked into. Nicely done, nicely, nicely done. So, good morning, y'all. It is Monday, March 14th, and um, I'm gonna be real with y'all. If y'all don't follow me on Instagram, you should follow me. But I told Instagram, like, I am not really trying to leave the house and do much of anything 
extra, extra read all about it. I'm not trying to do it because these gas prices are high. Okay. Um, so this lovely Monday, what I need to do is touch base with a lot of just clients that I had talked to really in January that were on, you know, a spring summertime timeline, get in touch with them, see where they are. Um, send out a few emails. I bought this little, bought that board the other day. Um, just so like I have my CRM and I talk to y'all about that all the time. I check it all the time, but it's also nice to just kind of have like a direct visual of, um, you know, uh, just your business, um, your pipeline is, you know, what it's kind of called in real estate or just any business. Um, so I'm going to probably complete that out, fill that out and just get everybody's name up there that I've talked to and just, you know, organize it to say, okay, you know, they want to be August, July, May, whatever. Are they pre-approved? Are they not pre-approved? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, so yeah, I should be home for majority of the day and I'm hope, I hope I'm home for majority of the week. Um, but as you all know, we ended out the last vlog. Hopefully I'm really, I haven't been ending them. I'm bad at that. Sorry, y'all. Um, but ended that out with getting Taryn under contract. So we should be having her inspection this week. So I will have to go out for that. Um, tomorrow I think that should be. And yeah, that's it. But I just wanted to say hello. Good morning. Um, check in with y'all later. Hey y'all, welcome back to another day. It's Tuesday, March 15th. I just left a class um, via Next Gen. Remember when I told y'all about that program? It was called Ribbon, Ribbon Cash, and basically they turn your finance offer into a cash offer um, to help you win offers in this crazy market. So there's now another company, um, they're called Okay, whatever they're called. They're called something. Um, and they had a class for us today to kind of go over how their program works. So same ideas, just different regulations and ways that they do things. And I actually kind of like this one better. Um, so I do have a few clients in mind that this could work for. The only thing about this particular program um, is that this one does not do FHA loans which and why they don't do them is because of the 91 day flip rule right we've talked about this before but basically when you buy a home and you're wanting to flip it for sale to be able to sell it to a fa with someone using the fha loan you have had to own the home for at least um the 90 days so they don't do FHA because of that rule. Um, the other program does though. Um, so yeah, so they only use it for conventional and VA loans, which makes me think back to this lady that I was working with like almost a year ago. We were house hunting forever. Um, I need to give her a call. I haven't talked to her in a long time, but when he said VA, my ears were like, Bing to see if she's even purchased a home, you know, cause this would work really well for her if she's still wanting to do that. She was an older lady that I was working with and I don't like really using the word older. You know, I usually say more mature, but when I say older, this lady was probably like um, late seventies, early eighties, wanting to purchase her first home. Very sweet lady. So I'm probably gonna give her a call and just check in and see how she's doing and see if this is something that she would want to consider um, and just go from there, you know, like, I'm not one of those realtors that want to only take on easy clients and easy deals. Like, I am, I am here to put in the sweat equity, honey, okay? Sweat equity and get me some coins, okay? And then, you know, just building those relationships or whatever. I talk about that all the time. So, yeah, y'all. It's just, I love learning new things. I love learning new programs. I just like having a nice little Rolodex in my brain of things that can get the deal done. Um, and then, of course, you know, share that information with y'all. Um, anywho, I'm about to go have a little personal me time, get my nails done. 
and um, I'll see y'all later. Good morning, top of the morning, you all. It is Wednesday, March 16th. I am about to do a virtual showing. I think I told you all I picked up a client, um, an investor client from LA. She's also a realtor. And we've been looking for some investment properties. She really wants to find like a duplex or something. So found a duplex on the southeast side of Houston. So I'm out here this morning about to call her on the FaceTime so she can take a look. Okay. Let's see. I mean, everything is fixable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here. In the here. Okay. The washer dryer. Uh huh. They probably should have moved this over, which they can move it, but it's already attached. Yeah. This is not enough room for a dryer, dimension wise. Dimension wise, okay. I don't know how big a washer dryer is. If she even have that, but she yeah. probably will eventually. This should be lined up a little bit more this way mm -hmm. to put a normal size dryer. Yeah. And I've based dryers, they're making, they pretty They're pretty, size. yeah. But I guess they put this here because the water things are well, right there. In case the tub leaked too, they required to have a yeah. sand pan now. But they they could have cut the hole with a little offset because the water going to make it in the drain depending on yeah. the offset. Okay. So... Not a big deal to move it and cut a hole in it. Oh, well, they got to get another pan and cut another hole and yeah. move it over. I'm saying that's a pretty big because how are you going to get your appliance in Yeah, there? that is a small. Look at it. Yeah, look, yeah. Because that's a big, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, so you, go ahead, The dryer would need to sit right there. And yeah. Yes. Is this, based upon that space, a, tr a traditional, regular size dryer will not fit. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. fit there. No. Correct. What is that? Why? Why would someone even put that in the middle anyway? Well, what this is is this is the pan that your washer sits in. So if it leaks, it yeah. catches the water. So it's supposed okay. to be here. Yeah. But what Mr. Russell is saying is that it's just not aligned correctly. It should have been over to the right some more. Because these two yeah. right here is where your water will come from. Those one to the washer, one to one to the, both to the washer. Yeah, yes, hot and cold, hot and cold for okay. the washer. So that's your water pipe. So that's why they have this here. Honestly, it just looks kind of like a little lackadaisical work. Yeah. They just didn't. <laughs> they just put it down. But okay. the big thing is the dryer. To, to, to make sure you have space for the dryer right there. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Exactly. So we can ask them about that. That shouldn't be. Because is there a hole? There's not a hole in there, right? In, in the dryer, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we'll have to we'll have to have them figure that out. Yeah, of course there's a whole drain Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let me okay. Pull it up right now. Yeah, I think I have a good idea if this is what I'm going with. For the for the for the dryer. For the dryer. We minimum need a thirty inches clear. Thirty the inches. Dryers, the uh, normally st standard size is like twenty and a half, twenty nine inches. Really? Yes, sir. And like you know, just following the specs on the plants, uh -huh. it shows like a. Uh, how to leave a space for a small cabin or something like that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah there is this a... is, that's normal. Yeah, it's it's normal. It's like on the cold. So okay. like, yeah, you do just good on the on the space. It's, you don't. So thirty inches is normal. Yeah, it's it's thirty inches. Clean. Okay. It's uh, the minimum. All right. Okay. So just what I I just left like half inch off. Okay. And uh, that's why this one for the hoses I, I put like two and a half inches. So, uh, okay. Yeah. Because by the beginning, you know, some some uh, supplies, the water supply lines, mm -hmm. yeah, they have like an elbow, so yeah. you don't have an issue with those. But some of them just just straight. Mm -hmm. So when you have your uh, washing machine, it's gonna be too close to connect the, uh, yeah. the water supply lines. Yeah. Okay. So that's why it's a little bit off from from the wall. Okay. Right. This is just emergency for emergency. Yeah. In case the yeah. Leak or yeah. Something yeah. Like and they have like you know the stuff all the way to the uh, outside. Okay. So okay. like do good uh, on the dimensions. Okay. So they don't worry about it. Okay. 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 <laughs> all right. Mr. Russell's okay. Yeah. Say that again, Tim. Mr. Russell, he 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 agrees with what he. I'm I'm trying to pull up my um, dryer. Okay. Um, if you'll give me one moment, I'm pulling it. Uh, the, the product depth is 30.25. Okay. Product width is 27. Yep. 
Perfect then. Good. That'll work. It'll fit. It'll fit. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Let me okay. Charge because of any like fire hazard issues. So if you have fire from the outside going in or inside coming out, this door should be able to self close. Yeah. So basically, they just need to change the need hinges. A more time in case you need to get out. Yeah. But it should be self closing. So right now it's not self closing. You see, it's just staying open. And then also, I mean, I guess the thickness and everything of the door is correct because yeah, they also have a cold. Yeah. So the door itself is good. It's just they need to change the hinges okay. to make it self close. Okay. Good enough. Water heater is okay. All right, perfect. Okay, it's starting to lower all the door opener sign. Okay. What did you say? I couldn't hear that one. The garage door opener is fine. Okay. And that's it. Okay. Mr. Russell said when I was talking to him the other day, he said that there was something that he's noticing in new fields, and I want to say it was in the garage that something the outlets don't work. I checked them. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. It's later on in the day. Have I talked to y'all today? Today's March seventeenth, Thursday. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, we got our inspection report back for Terrence House. Um, I mean, he literally told us everything that was on it yesterday. So I called her to go over it without actually looking at it before. And I was like, oh, it's literally every single thing that we went over as I did the walkthrough with him yesterday. So we just went ahead and sent that on over to the builder. And then Monday we will do our first walk with them. And yeah, we don't close until April 20th, but the builder is wanting to kind of fast forward and get these things done because they're really done building in that community. So all their workers and stuff are going to be going on vacation and leaving and they don't want to really drag it out until next month and then may not have their trade workers there to, you know, touch up and fix anything that we need done. So next week, and I said, yeah, sure, that's fine. But Taryn is still set on closing in April. She's not in a rush, and I respect it. Um, anywho, that's it. I just talked to a few other clients today, touched bases with a lot of people, um, talked some money, some earnest money, saving coins, you know, just all of that good stuff. Um, that's it. Hey y'all, hey y'all. Today is Friday the 18th. Um, so the listing agent for Jessica's property is, I feel like this man is overwhelmed. Like just with, I don't, he's just overwhelmed because every time I try to call him or talk to him, it's just like, you can hardly keep him on the phone for like two minutes if he even answers. Um, but Jessica's lender just called me and they were like, hey, we need this paperwork. We're supposed to be close. Shoot. I should have asked him about that while I had him on the phone. I completely forgot um, about closing because we just haven't heard anything from him. So maybe I'll try to shoot him a text and see if he's responsive, but he don't even respond to those. But anyways, they need a document for underwriting, you know, so we can work on getting, you know, a clear to close on this loan, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. We're supposed to be closing on this property the end of this month. And so I'm like, all right, let me give him a call. He answers, surprisingly, on the first ring. And I'm like, George, you know, underwriting's trying to get in contact with you. He goes, you know, I'm just a bad employee. You know, I'm not good at the communicating thing. And I'm just like, wait, what? Like, is that what we're really saying right now? Like, you just go, you just not good at it? That, and that's, that's it? But hey. Kudos for your honesty, sir. Go get you an assistant. Because if you can't answer this phone, you need some help. Hell. <laughs> anyway, so hopefully we got that figured out. I told him what we needed. You know, he's like, oh, okay, I'll get to their email. And I said, no, no, no. No, no, no. We're not going to do that. I'll get to their email thing. I'll tell you what they need right now. Go ahead and work that up and send it over to them, please. And thank you. <laughs> oh, y'all. This real estate thing. It's just... It's funny. 
because in real estate, you know, like unlike working for like big corporations and da da da, and you get training to be, you know, a certain type of way. Like, of course, you get real estate training, but you don't actually get trained on how to like do customer service and just like you know to represent yourself and your brand and da da da. da. Like people just be out here doing anything. Anywho, that's just my little tidbit of a rant this morning. Hope y'all are blessed. Um, I may be going out to look at some more duplexes for my investor client in California. We saw a few things hit the market, so I'm going to go try and uh, get a look at those for her today. All right. Good morning. Happy Sunday, um, March 20th. The month is moving. I remember a few vlogs back, I was like, the month is not even moving. This month is moving. Um, also, I told y'all a few vlogs back that I was going to do an open house at least one day out of every month, you know. So today's a day. Last month, I failed. I did not do an open house for the month of February, um, but I'm doing one today. Um, this is my broker's listing. <gasps> You've got to be kidding me. Got to be kidding. So annoying. <laughs> um, this is my broker's listing. It's a luxury listing. I think it's like at 900000 It's been on the market for like 35 days now. So it's not new to the market, which is when I would prefer to do an open house. Is when it's new to the market and you get a lot more traffic when you do an open house when it's, once again, new to the market. So... We'll see what type of traffic we get in today, if we get any, honestly. Um, but I'm just sticking to sticking to what I said I was gonna do, trying to stay disciplined in my work ethic. Um, so yeah, let's go to the open house. Good morning, vloggity vlog. Today is Wednesday, March 24th. I'm outside walking my dogs, but I just got a call from Cameron, Jessica's lender, and the appraisal value for her condo has come in below um, the purchase amount. So the purchase amount was 202900 dollars $202, and um, they appraised it right at two hundred thousand, which is slightly like annoying. But um, I'm gonna have to now call the listing agent and see if they're gonna be willing to drop. Come on, Svenny. Come, thank you. I'm going to see if they're going to be willing to drop the purchase price down to that 200000 If not, um, Jessica will have to pay that difference. So, as of right now, she was actually getting a refund at closing, which means she was going to be bringing $0 to the closing table. Uh, remember, she did pay the high earnest money of $5,000. So she did pay some money, but as far as any other costs for closing, she does not have to pay. Hey, come this way. Um, so I haven't spoken with Jessica yet. I'll probably call her here shortly. It's like eight, eight something in the morning, like eight fifteen. Um, so I just want to give y'all that update. Um, that's all the updates I'm going to give right now. So I'll check in. Uh, I'm lower that parcel. Uh, it's not an FHA loan, right? It can't be. Um, no, it's let not. Let me do this. I'm going to send some more comps uh, to see if we can have a reevaluation of it because we're selling these now at 2029 and uh, 2079. But I don't think the seller, I mean, I don't speak for him, but I worked for him for 20 years. I don't think he's going to lower the price. Uh, you know, I, I figured that. So I just wanted to see if you were willing to send the cops. Um, yeah, I, I will. Let me, uh, uh, I, I feel a little better today. Let me uh, work on that and I'll send you some uh, comps that just closed. Okay. okay. Um, and then also, we're supposed to be closing at the end of the month, and we you said that the um, the builder walkthrough and all that would be able to be scheduled, or I would hear yeah, from someone. I'll, yeah, hopefully that's going to happen. I don't get involved too much in that. Our construction manager uh, takes care of that, and she calls people uh, uh, when she's ready to do that. So you should be getting a call from her pretty quick. 
Okay, is there an email that I can contact her on? Or uh, you anything? can call her. Uh, you have a pen handy? Yeah, let me get her phone number, please. Yeah, it's 83. What's her name? Uh, Sammy. Sammy. Perfect. Thank you so much, George. And I'll be looking out for those um, those comps. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. -bye. <sighs> okay, y'all. So there's that. That was what I figured was going to happen because it's new construction. And most time, new construction is not going to be willing to waiver on their price um and then with this also being a conventional loan which is probably one of the reasons why they weren't accepting fha um means that they they don't have to um lower this price and then also there isn't a so built into FHA loans is already like a contingency that says if the home does not appraise and we cannot come to a understanding or an agreement on what the purchase price will be, that the buyer is able to then back out of the part, <clears throat> then the buyer is able to terminate the contract and get their earnest money back. With a conventional loan, um, you do not have that. So she could still technically terminate but um, she would lose her earnest money in this case. I want to say, luckily, we're not, you know, everybody's coin is different. So even 2000 and I think it comes out to, what's the total number? She would have to pay the difference if we can't get this appraiser to reevaluate what he's talking about. It would be 2000 and so... Wait, does that even make sense? He appraised it for 200000 202 900 minus 200000 I'm doing math wrong. I just got back from the gym, and I'm not even really, like, here yet. Okay, I did do the math right. I just did it a different way. So she would have to bring um, $2,050 to closing if we cannot get this appraiser to reevaluate um, so that's that I'm going to give her a call now, actually, actually, yeah, let me see if I can get her on the phone, um, give her my current updates and then, um, we'll see, we will see. And like he said, he doesn't speak for the seller. So technically he should ask the seller. Um, hopefully he does his due diligence. Hey. Good morning, good Jessica. Morning. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing well. So I know Cameron told me he spoke with you this morning about the appraisal value. Yes, he did. Yeah. Um, you sound sad. What's going on? No, I just um just kind of like just want to know what what I what needs to happen. You know. Okay, so there's really, there's a couple of options. I did just get off the phone with the listing agent, George. Um, so I do have some updates. I wanted to talk to him before I called you. But so what could happen is, one, either the seller could agree to lower the purchase amount of the property to what okay. the appraised value is. Two, you can bring the difference of okay. what the appraised value is short, or we could come to an agreed middle price. Okay, and what did he say? He said they're not going to lower the value, which is what I figured. They are not going to lower the purchase amount because when these are new construction, all the other properties around the area are selling for, you know, they're appraising for what they're asking for or more. Um, so on that tip, he said, you know, we're not going to lower the $2,000, but what he is willing to do is, um, send in some comparables to me so we can send it to the appraiser to say, Hey, these other properties have appraised at value. So can you change your report? Basically. So hopefully that 
should work. I'm like I was honest, honestly surprised that he appraised it for two hundred thousand. Like I was shocked. Um, yeah. So that's what we're gonna be working on now. He should be sending hopefully those over to me sooner than later, um, so we can get those sent off. Um, but in the event that the appraiser still does not waver on his appraisal amount. Are you willing to bring the difference to the table? I have to. That's the only option. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, yes. If you want to keep the house, yes, that is the only option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to. Okay. Well, I will allow you to do your, your work and everything and just let me know. Alrighty, love. Um, and then he just gave me the number for the builder so we can figure out what's going on with this inspection um, and yeah, walk through and stuff. No, and, and I saw there were no appliances yet, so I know that we couldn't have the inspection. Oh, you went right. to the property? Oh, you looked at the um, the appraisal report. report. I don't know when he did that, so maybe they do have them in or they don't yet. I didn't even fully look at the report to see the details. Um so we can technically inspect without the appliances um but it's you know it's always better to yeah. do it with them in there so let me give her a call to see what her time frame is looking like so we can do ours because they're they clearly want to wait to the last minute to get things done and i don't like that okay <laughs> Okay, well, just let me know what needs to be done from me, what you need from me. Okay, will do. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, now I'm going to call Cameron back, who is the lender, and give him an update on what we plan on doing. I could really look these comps up myself. Hey, what's up? Hey, Cameron. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. So I just spoke with the listing agent. And... Oh, sorry about that. Let me uh, go somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you get some work getting done over there? No, I'm, I'm in the hotel right now. But oh. I heard some construction in the hotel, but let me uh, step outside real quick. It's a little little loud in here okay okay go ahead i'm sorry yeah so they're not going to be willing to lower the appraisal value which i figured they were not um uh -huh. but he did said that say that he would send in the comps to see if we can fight that appraisal because he i don't i really don't understand why this appraiser did that everything else around there has been mm -hmm. selling at like the 2029 or more so I, I'm okay. I am confused as to what. Yeah, yeah I definitely understand. Um, how you know how many comps he's, he's gonna send over? Um, he did not say, and I'm actually gonna run some myself really quickly. Okay. To see. Um, do, do, do. Okay, because I think one of the things, too, so if the appraiser has to go back out there and reassess, that may add a little bit more to the appraisal costs, um, which is, which is, uh, I'm not sure what, what, um, what they may come back with, because usually if they have to go back there, it's probably like another hundred dollars on top of the um, appraisal fee, mm -hmm. but I'll have to check in with them and, you know, request it and see what they say. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong. Did Jessica already pay the amount? She has not yet, no. Okay. So if I look at what has sold recently. Oh, I see why. Because everything that showing sold has been since um before they did their price increase um so yeah he's gonna have to do his own appraisals 
okay. and um, I mean comps and send them because okay. as far as what's pending, they have, yeah, there's quite a few of them pending at the 2029 and 204. So we shall see, but Jessica did say that, you know, if, if the um, appraiser still does not waver, she would be willing to pay the difference. Okay. So. Okay. All right. That's and um, should I wait for the comps from the uh, from the listing agent, or how should I? Uh... Um, I think he's gonna send them directly to me. Okay. Um, and then as soon as I get them, I'll get. He moves. He just moves slow. So I'll give yeah. him a couple of hours. And if not, um, I'll try to get him to move a little faster. Okay. Sounds real good. All right. Thank you, Cameron. Yeah. Thank you for the call. I'll, uh, I'll be waiting. Okay. Have a good day. All right. You too. Bye-bye. Um, all right. Well, now I see nothing else has closed over there for the, the higher price point that they've increased it to. Um, and there's still actually a lot that are still pending, pending sales for the, the lesser price, the 190 and things like that, which is, unless he just hasn't closed this unit. See, you know, you know what the issue is, y'all? <laughs> the issue is, is that this, um... He hasn't closed out his transactions on HAR. So when you look to see what things have sold for, let me show y'all. All right, see, these say pending at these price points, right? Um, August 2021. You know, like all of these should already be closed and marked as sold on HAR because they are they should be at least right like i'm pretty sure this one says march of 2022 um but even still 194.9 197 so we shall see what this one says may okay so those may or may not be right but either way you know the appraiser can only go off of things that have already been um sold so we'll we'll see where we get with this um and just go from there but i need to go take a shower because i just left the gym so today to is march 24th update for jessica so the listing agent did send his comps but just like when I looked yesterday and I said everything was still pending, that was at the higher price point, he sent me the same pending comps. There was two that had recently closed, but they weren't at that price point of um, the 202. So it's it's a complex of 20 or 30 something buildings and everything that has closed over there is below the 200 um, price point. So there there was no comps that I could provide for them to, um, you know, show the value of what we are currently trying to close at. So literally what's happening is, is that we're one of the first properties at above the 200 price point to be closing. Um, and they're not willing to waver on their price. So just spoke with her. She's going to have to bring the $2,000 and whatever change difference to the table. Um, you know, and I mean, she's not that excited about it. Like, why would you? Well, who would be excited about bringing any more money to the table than planned? Um, but y'all, I'm parked like in this little parallel and people are just moving around. Um, but even besides that, this listing agent, I think I've mentioned a time or two before that he is like the hardest person to get in contact with. The underwriting team, Jessica's lender and underwriting team has been trying to contact him forever about getting 
um, something signed. They need a condo form or there's some company called Condo Safer. Somebody has been calling him to complete some information that we need to be completed. So final closing disclosures and everything can be done. And this man will not answer the phone. He will not return the phone call. I have emailed him on this three times. I spoke to him and I told him, um, the lender has emailed him and you know, he's saying, oh, tell them to call this number. They have called this number. They have left voicemails. Just call these people back. Cause now what's gonna happen is the lender is saying that, you know, by the time he completes this or whatever it is that they need, it's gonna take, a, you know, three or four days to process that. Um, and then so on and so on. Um, but it's not just the lender, you know, that is, is waiting for this. You know, you have to send disclosures and things like that three days out. Jessica has, if I remember telling y'all, she has a grant from Houston, it's called Neighborhood Lift. They need to receive disclosures um, three to four days prior to closing as well so they can release their funds. So what it's looking like to me is that we're gonna have a delayed closing and it's irritating my soul because all we need is for one person to answer their phone. But <sighs> yeah, that's the update y'all. Bye. Happy Monday, March 20th. Email and, uh, um, working from you know, mommy's home today. She day. just got back from Jamaica yesterday, uh, so we're uh, work bonding. Um, say hello to the vlog, mother. Nobody would have known those were your pajamas <laughs> unless you said them. Um, what's going on? So, the appraisal for Jessica came in low. She has to pay the difference. We negotiated. They decided not to negotiate back. She's paying the difference. Better? Yes, much better. <laughs> um, 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 her closing also got delayed because the builder is not done building. So they're saying we were supposed to be closing this week, the 31st of this month, which is what on Thursday or something that's no longer happening. We've pushed it back to the 11th as of now. Um, other people are just, houses are being built. Um, oh, 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 oh. Working with a new buyer that is coming from New York. Um, she... One, she's moving to Texas and wants to buy a primary home. So she is working on getting a job here so we can qualify her as a Texas resident and get her pre-approved that way. But she needs a job offer letter with income stated so they can do the official pre-approval for that. And then also, remember we ran into this with Jasmine as a community property state. Um, this client is separated, not divorced. So I just had a conversation with her about when will that divorce be finalized? Because if it is not final before um, we start the home shopping process and close and all of that, um, her pre-approval will have to include her um, soon-to-be ex-husband's liabilities. And she definitely doesn't want that. So she said hopefully that divorce will be done soon, just waiting on some signatures um, so those are just things to keep in mind, you know, when, if you're coming to Texas and you may or may not have any of those situations going on, um, just keep that in the back of your head. Um, mommy's over here stressing. She came back from Jamaica and everything is in shambles. So, yeah. So I'm just calling a touching base and sending emails to my clients and mommy is doing what she's doing over there. Yay. Trying to put out fires. Trying to put out fires, according to her. Okay, Good bye. morning. Happy hump day. Today is March 30th. The month is coming to an end, y'all. Um, I'm just in the kitchen cooking a little breakfast. But um, I just wanted to talk to y'all really quickly about interest rates. So yesterday, um, 
we had a conversation with one of my clients that is currently under contract. Um, well, really, her lender called me and was like, hey, I have her on the other line. She's um, saying that she doesn't want to move forward with the purchase of the home because, you know, I just told her the interest rates went up and we need to go ahead and get her locked in. And the interest rate that they can get her locked in at right now is 4.37, I think, on a conventional loan um, with extremely good credit. So what that did was the initial um, estimate, you know, that was disclosed to her on the house was like right at 1750, which was her sweet spot. You know, she didn't want to go above that as far as a mortgage. Now with the interest rate going up, um, cause I believe that was quoted at a 4.1 interest rate. Um, so now with that 4.3 interest rate that made her mortgage go up to about 1900 and some change like 1905 or 1930, something like that. Um, so of course that put her in a state of panic and fear. Um, so he called me, he's like, Hey, I have her on the other line. Um, you know, just quickly went over, you know, what I just told y'all because, so you all have to remember, you know, the lender and the realtor are two separate entities. You know, we do not work together. So as far as the financial aspect of your loan and things like that, I'm not, I'm not necessarily privy to all of it unless you choose to want me to be privy to it and you, you tell me everything that the lender is telling you. I'm not, you know, it's not always, hey, this is their interest rate. Hey, this is this. It's, it's not like that. They do their job. I do my job. And then sometimes we have to come together and do our jobs together, which is what happened yesterday. So we got on the phone with her and initially, you know, three-way call. And she was saying, hey, Alexa, I understand that I'm going to lose my interest. Um, not my interest. I'm going to lose my earnest money, which I believe was $1,500, um, which was honestly less than what the earnest was, is less than the 1%, right? It's really like half because the house is 245 or something. So it should have been like $2,450, but he let us do a $1,500 um, for earnest money. So she's like, I understand I'm going to lose my earnest money, um, but I just, I can't do 1900 Like, I can't do that. You know, that's just not doable, you know, how she's running it in her head. And so, um, that's not what we want to do, right? Because at, at this point, these grits are not cooking fast enough for me. At this point, if she, if she makes that decision, you know... Is your intention to still buy a home? That was, you know, that was my first, pretty much my first question to her after she said, you know, I want to back out of this loan. I can't deal with that. 1900 is just way more than what I wanted to spend. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. I asked her if her intention was to still purchase a home. Are you know, are you thinking that you want to go back into the market and start house shopping again? And she said, yes. So initially I said, well, if you back out of this home, that's going to be the worst decision that you end up making. Um, hold on, y'all. Let me put y'all. So, yeah. So if she ended up doing that, uh, not that, I mean, I already had on the bonnet, whatever. If she ended up doing that, that's going to put us back in the market where home prices are still rising, especially new construction. So she has a new construction home um, priced at 245 It's a little over 1,700 square feet, um, three bedroom, uh, two and a half bath, two story with yard, um, you know, all of that, all of that new construction. So nice new finishes, quartz countertops, tile, wood flooring, you know, the whole shebang. Everything that she's been looking for aesthetically, really at the top of her price point. And honestly, this, why the phone is beeping, hold on. I'm not sure what interest rate you were quoted initially, but they're definitely on the rise. So the sooner you can lock in, the better.
<clears throat> okay, so I've been texting my other clients that are under construction um, for them to, to talk to their lenders and see when they can lock in their interest rates because I don't, I don't want to have to deal with this <laughs> every single time, you know. Um, but anyways, so, you know, I just explained to her like, hey, you know, one, I support you in whatever decision you make because I am i won't be here after this to pay your mortgage. So if you truly feel like you cannot handle that, then I respect it. But I don't know how, what's the best way to say it? On a large scale of things, $150 more, right? And even though this is already the top of her budget, where can we remove $150 from your other expenses to put towards this home? That was that was the lender's topic. I said to her, if we go back out into this market, you know just as well as I know that there are no homes that are going to be equivalent to the one that you have under contract at that price point right now for $245. The home that she has can easily sell right now for three hundred thousand, and she knows this. She knows this very much so because we we snagged this when it was back on the market, and we snagged it. Um, they could have easily sold us that house for three hundred thousand, but they kept it at its original price point that they had it for last year. So we we truly looked up. So that was you know you have to kind of change the client's perspective. You know, have them, all they see is the number. But if we go back out into this market, one, 10 out of 10 times, we're not going to find anything equivalent, especially at a lesser price point. Or if we do stay at this price point, it's not going to be new construction. It's probably going to be an older home, definitely in an area that you do not want to be in. You know, these are just all the other things. Um, And so, you know, she was like, okay, I understand that. Cause she's like, you know, I, I do still see, uh, she still is actively looking at homes. Um, and you know, she still sees things and everything that she likes that she would want and feel comfortable living in is $350,000 plus. So us going back into the market, it's very slim chance that we would find and secure a property that is going to one, be less than this $1,900 that you're paying, or that you're gonna be paying for this home. And two, it's not gonna be a house that you love nearly as much as this home. So, you know, she she took that in and I said, you know, you know, we you literally at this point, if you just wanna back out, we're not gonna get our earnest money back because you're not backing out due to any of the the contingencies in the contract. You're not backing out due to any of the contingencies in the contract. This is just you backing out because you're getting cold feet. So she did, she had already understood, you know, the earnest money. So I said, so if that is the case, she's like, when is the last, you know, when do I have to make this decision? And I said, really, at this point, you have up until closing to make that decision if that's what you choose to do. Um, and then hope that, you know, the, the sellers wouldn't want to, you know, take it another step further, but I, I didn't even go into that. I thought it, but I didn't even go into that. I didn't want to scare her. Um, so, you know, our closing date is supposed to be April 20th. So I said, you really have up until then. I said, but you know, out of respect for the sellers and just all of that, we, if this is really a decision that you want to make, we need to tell them sooner than later. But I want you to take the day and the night to think on it and sleep on it and really just take in the professional advice that I'm giving you. You know, like I am not um, disregarding, you know, how you feel about your budget and everything like that, but buying a home is a goal for you. And if you want to stick with this goal, you should probably stick with this house. So then the lender said, you know, and also I'm, I'm looking at, you know, your credit profile. She has an 800 plus credit score, you know, like she's good. He was like, you know, I, I see a few of 
your liabilities and you have like two credit cards with um you know very low minimum payments of 35 dollars here you know he's like if you pay these two balances off um that would put 75 dollars back in your pocket and then there was something else he was like so you know we could total get you 95 dollars of payments that you could stop paying over here and put towards your mortgage so there's 95 dollars there and then he was like no i'm sure there's other things that you could you know potentially cut back on and this i hate this part of the conversation because nobody wants to buy a house and then have to cut back on what they do with their personal life or other expenses or how they enjoy living you know like nobody wants to be house poor so that's why these conversations are so difficult sometimes because it comes off like we're telling you to be house poor but we're not we're just asking for you to really take the time to reevaluate your finances a little bit and does this 150 dollars that you don't want to spend does it really warrant you walking away from this house? You know, it's like, take that moment to really think deeper into this. Um, and so then I also, um, and then her card note, she only has a hundred, a hundred, Jesus. <laughs> she only has like a year, a year and a half left on the car note or something like that. And um, I believe it's like $400 is what her note is. You know, he said, if you were to, you know, once you pay that off, you know, then that's that's also some money that you have back in your pocket. You know, we don't know what her future plans are, but, you know, we just our job is to put things into perspective. So I did also ask him, which I don't know, lenders don't necessarily always talk about this, but buying down the interest rate. I asked him, I said, you know, what what would that look like for her? <clears throat> what would that look like for her? She didn't know anything about that. So, you know, we explained to her what buying down the interest rate is. And that's basically like you you pay the lender some money. Um, he said to buy it down a point, 20, it would be like $2,800. And then you buy down your interest rate a point. I'm not exactly sure how much a point equals to the actual interest rate. So I don't know if that buys it down, you know, 0.25%. I'm not sure. I don't know how much percentage a point equals. But anyways, we can all Google that later, I guess. Um, so he said, you know, it'd be about $2,800 to buy down a point, which of course that would help. Um, and it's, you know, sometimes it's just more so for the lender to do the math because sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't. It really just depends per everyone's situation. Um, so he said he would run that math for her and let her know what that would look like over the lifetime of the loan and how much, um, difference will that really make. Um, we talked about her applying for her homestead exemption, although homestead exemption is not necessarily hundreds of dollars. It is still some money off of what, you know, you're paying for taxes. And of course, your taxes are included in your total mortgage payment. So he said, you know, it's anywhere between 20 to $40. Maybe um, it, it really just depends. Um, but his advice to her was that, you know, rather than paying down a point on your interest rate, he suggested that she just pay off those small balances on those two cards that she has, put that, that $2,800 that she would consider to paying down that point, take that money and pay off some other liabilities. So then she's freed up to have extra funds towards her mortgage. Um, so we had that conversation yesterday. Um, she she took it in very well and i woke up to a text message from her this morning that said thank you very much um i had time to sleep on it and i want to move forward so hallelujah y'all <laughs> yes. hallelujah um hallelujah for all of us you know like i'm you know i'll be very transparent i'm not in the, i'm not I'm not in this business to be halfway getting through transactions and then be busting out and not getting no check. Because as y'all know, we don't get paid till we get to the closing table. So saving deals is a part of this job. Um, but I really do care so much about my clients and I'm always going to do what's in their best interest. But I need to do what's in my best interest too. So let's save the deal, honey. 
Um, but I'm never going to lie and make things seem more, you know, fluff it up more than what it really is. Like, this is the circumstances. This is what it is. You know, $1,900. Most people, most first-time homeowners right now going, you know, entry-level home purchases is my new terminology here lately. But when you're buying an entry-level home, your first home, most people are going into $300,000 houses. You know, like, that. that's the mark right there. Um, and that's a $2,100 mortgage, you know, average, average. That is a $2,100 mortgage. So her being at $1,900, you know, I just, I, I want to put this in perspective for her and for y'all, if y'all are in the same predicament. And I'm putting it in perspective for myself as well. Because um, interest rates are up. You know, I was up, you know, that 4.3 and all of that, looking at all of that interest rates is, they on the up and up. So... I'm preparing myself mentally for it too, um, just to just to be ready. Um, that's it, y'all. That's it. It's eleven o'clock. I have I was invited to a lunch with my broker. Um, it's actually just her and I um, going to a lunch that she was invited to. She's she's so sweet. Um, every she's she's actually a an influencer. Um, so she gets invited to a lot, a lot, a lot of things. And she, if it's just her and a plus one, a lot of times she'll put it in our, our database, whatever that thing is called, where she talks to, you know, we all talk to each other and she'll say, Hey, I have a plus one for, for this. And, you know, we'll say, Oh, I'm interested in going and she picked me this time. So, um, going to go do that with her at one o'clock. Um, and really today I'm going to get on the phone with all of my clients that I have under construction, um, that are supposed to be closed. I have people that are under contract for throughout the end of, I think September. So I really want to talk to them and try to get them to get on the phone with their lenders and see how fast they can lock in these interest rates, even if they have to possibly pay for an early lock. Um, we'll just, you know, things like that. That's my job today because it's it's on my heart. <laughs> Anyways, hope y'all enjoyed my little TED talk. Um, this is honest. You know what? Let me just go ahead and end out this vlog because um, I'm going out of town this weekend. So thank y'all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. As always, I really hope you learned something. If you do really learn things from these vlogs, share my information with somebody that you know in Texas that's ready to buy a house. That's all I ask. Subscribe, like, and share. Follow me on Instagram. Um, bye. Okay, so I know I said I was ending the vlog yesterday, but I just, <laughs> oh y'all. So, as I told you, interest rates are on the rise. And as I mentioned, I was calling all of my clients that are currently under construction that have not under, I keep saying under construction, under contract, well, technically still under construction too, but under contract that have not locked their rates to get in touch with their lenders and try to get their rates locked. <sighs> I've been successful at that and most of them have heeded my advice and have done that. But goodness gracious, y'all, I have one client who locked their rate today. Her home is due to be completed, I think in June. Um, and they sent her a um, they sent her a, a chart of what it would cost to lock the rates today. So this would be like a ninety day lock, and when you're locking that early in advance, you have to pay for it, right? Um, because I've mentioned before, you can only lock so far in advance. Um, so, and I, I think normally it's like a 30 day lock, which is a free lock. Um, so she reached out to her lender after I spoke with her this morning and, oh, this is going to be too hard for y'all to see. I'll try to include it in here if I remember. Um, but so right now conventional rates are at a 4.375, right? That's what rates were today. So to lock in at a 4.375, $6,632 to get that 90 day lock. Um, and then it went up, then they had a 4.5, 4.6, 2.5, 2.6, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2
five, 4.875, 5%. And they had 5.125, I guess, is what they guesstimate for the lock to kind of be around the time that she can actually lock. Um, that would have been $474. But then that also would have put her mortgage, you know, higher than what she wants to end up paying. So she went ahead and locked in the 4.375 for that charge of $6,632. That will have to be paid at closing, so that just basically increases her closing cost. Um, so originally she was supposed to be paying like 18, 19 grand for closing. Now it's gone up to 24, whatever. Um, so yeah, you know, that's, it's just something to think about, y'all. And y'all already know my situation. So I'm over here in my head trying to figure it out. So if y'all are trying to figure it out like I'm trying to figure it out, you know, that is just something to be aware of. You know, the, the rates haven't risen this quickly in a long time. They're still technically low compared to the Great Recession, you know, prior to the Great Recession and around that time, you know, rates were like 8%. And then years before that, it was like, you know, 10, 12, even, you know, 18%, you know, years ago, you know, rates have definitely been way higher than what they are right now. But just in comparison to um, the 2020 rates, the 2021 rates where you were seeing 2.5%, this summer, we're definitely going to see 5% rates. Um, if you consider down payment assistance, you're going to be seeing 6% rates and possibly even 7% rates. So it's just, it's just, you know, just a fair warning, warning yourselves and warning me too. Um, but yeah, that's it y'all. Today is March 31st. It's the end of the month. You know, I, let's see what the summer of real estate has for us y'all i'm a little nervous but let's see bye